here we are at another Wednesday. Sorry about the uh, mix up, even with uh, YouTube. I realized I hit my take it to Facebook, never hit the uh, put up the notice to YouTube. So I'm so sorry. Rookie error, my fault. And beyond that, we have this time change, which um, I don't know. Well, I kind of see that in the comments that I'm pretty done with this. Like, let's just pick a time and stick to it, huh? Uh, I know over here, Congress has had it kind of on their docket for years and years and years and years. And they can't seem to make a decision about it, which probably shouldn't shock me. But it'd be really nice to just not have to do this every twice a year, right? So I'm so happy to see. I see Joe and Leanne and Robin. I think we, I think we might be a smaller group today because of all this nonsense, but that's fine with me. Uh, I purposely didn't don't have a guest on today because I realized, you know, when I have a guest on, it can be difficult for me to monitor the chat. Um, and I thought, you know, today might be a nice time just to. Uh, relax a little bit uh, with those of us in the chat and, um, you know, not be a host, so to speak, right? So uh, I thought today, uh, oh, hi, Jean. I know, I know. I don't think uh, the UK uh, does it for another week or two. So we're kind of feeling the same uh, we did a potty mouth on Monday and I couldn't figure out if I needed to be there at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Uh, and I was wrong. I showed up at nine. No one was there. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll get through this. It's another hump, right? So I thought we would just talk about what's happening right now in the garden. Uh, I saw a little earlier in the chat that Robin was saying it's 70 well, we're at 69, which is crazy weather for March. Uh, I will say to any of you who are doing any winter sowing right now, check your uh, containers. Because I noticed a few of mine look a bit dry. I've moved everything into the shade. So they're not turning into an oven uh, on these almost 70 degree days. I'm really hoping for it just to get one more, one more good frost. I know it's coming. We're we're not out of uh, this is fall spring as far as as far as I know, but you know this um, weather is just getting weirder by the minute. So I I would imagine a lot of us, those of us who uh, start seeds indoors, have probably started doing that. A good bit. Um, I have done, man, it, and we're getting into March, which is, you know, time to start tomatoes, time to start some of the warm weather things, which that's a whole other piece of business, right? Uh, and I'm still waiting for some of my peppers to germinate. So it'll all catch up. I'm not concerned. Everything was Oh yeah, you're right, Robin. Some states don't even do it. Uh, and I, anyway, I, it's all crazy to me. Well, a little too much for me. So what I thought we might do to start this off, um, and I thank you for being here, you guys. Uh, this is great. And I kind of like that we're a little smaller today, so maybe we can actually have some conversation, right? So I'm going to share my screen. I have a, a database that I keep up. Uh, it helps me manage all my varieties and things. And since I'm upping my flower game this year, uh, it helps me see pictures so I know colors, like how I'm going to plant them, all of those things. So I thought I would share the screen with you and we could kind of discuss some of the varieties and styles and maybe see what 
uh, you guys are doing or if you have any questions. So I, I'm going to do that. And I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable with this. I will say reasonably. And there we go. This is my website for any of you who have not uh, been there before. Yes, I think I'm sharing. Okay. Let me just bring it down a little bit so I can see the chat at the same time. But I keep, um, huh, now I'm not seeing my chat. Okay, one sec. I'm going to come over here. Oh, okay, now I can see it all. Kind of. <laughs> one second. Okay, there we go. So I can, and I'm going to take my face out so you just see. Nope, that didn't work. Nope, I want you to see. Is that the only way I can do that? Huh. Sorry, probably should have. I did fiddle with it before and I thought it worked just fine. But let's see. Okay, we can, I guess, start here. But anyway, uh, website is Real Food Comes Dirty. And I have a spot there uh, for what I'm sewing uh, right now. So, okay, this has worked better in the past. Let me, huh. Well, oh, I'm so sorry about this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try just one more time. If it doesn't come through in a good way. Oh, hi, Betty. Welcome. We're trying to uh, share a screen here. We're actually trying to share a website. Okay, maybe. Okay, this might be better. Okay, I see how it's working. All right. Sorry about that. A little crazy. Uh, so it's going to start uh, backwards by what I've sewn the most recently. Although this doesn't look like my most recent. Oh, do you ever have days that just kind of don't work out exactly like you were hoping they would? Oh, here we go. Refresh. Nothing like a refresh. Okay, so here's my latest sewings. Uh, I'm trying these. I, I'm also, as I'm planting a lot more flowers, I'm also trying to figure out uh, really nice fillers for those flowers. So I'm growing uh, a yellow milkweed and this beautiful, oh my goodness, this beautiful red jewel grass. Uh, and the type is called Sataria. Uh, so, you know, UK, US, I'm hoping, oh my goodness. Okay. What? This is not. Oh my gosh. So sorry. It was working there for a second and now it's, uh, okay. Last try. I kid you not. This is it. Otherwise, we'll I'll just have it up on my screen and we'll talk about it a little bit. I just thought it'd be a little more engaging if you could actually see the photos. Uh, here, okay. Last try. Let's let's get her done. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. I think cross your fingers. I'm crossing mine. So anyway, uh, the Satari grass is just gorgeous. And of course, some more perennial daisies, which I just love. 
Now this variety uh, on the left is a basket flower, which I've never seen before. And they are just crazy gorgeous. Uh, they almost look like a thistle. Yeah, I don't think that's going to bring it up for me. I want to just make the picture big. But I don't want to screw around here too much because I'll blow the whole thing. So this beautiful basket flower uh, and this Dara looks like Queen's Anne lace, but it's in much darker colors and some very soft pastel. So very excited about that. I've never grown the American flag leek before, but I think I saw um, Robin in the comments say that that's one of her favorites. King Richard too. And I'm also growing, okay, where did my little thing go? Okay. Okay, this is, oh, I'm so sorry. This is just not working. I have done this before with absolutely no problems. Well, I guess this is not that day. Okay. Yeah, this is not that day. Okay. So it was a great idea. Uh, <laughs> didn't really work out in, uh, in real time. Uh, I wonder if I could just bring it up on this. I don't want to just talk to you about varieties. Maybe I need to not go back and check uh, maybe I can't check the uh, chat while I'm doing this. You guys up for one more shot or are you kind of like, why are we doing this today? Uh, I was just hoping to give everyone a little uh, inspiration for maybe some of the things they'd like to try. Uh, oh, yeah, these those Bulgarian giant leeks, Joe, are like amazing. Uh, they really are ridiculously giant. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more go. You guys are, you guys are troopers right now because, yeah. Okay, one more time. We're gonna we're gonna keep it tight, and then what I'll do. If I miss any of your questions, because I can't always keep up on the chat at the same time, I will go back and read it and we'll look at those things. Okay. So here goes nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is not. Now, wait a minute, this is a shared screen, so I should be able, I know what I need to do. Okay. This is called real-time YouTube craziness. Okay. I have, mm-mm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I give. This was going to be fun. Okay. So, hi, Trolled. Hi, Mags. Hi, Mark. Sorry for this um, really pathetic uh, showing today. I just don't understand what's happening. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to work kind of uh, quickly on this. See if we can still, still get this done. Okay, so we got to the my leeks, which have all sprouted now. These were planted on the 5th, and they're already up. 
Uh, I'm also really leaning heavy into sprouting broccolis this year. I uh, love broccoli, but the heads sometimes can, you know, you're, you're letting it develop really nicely and, and then you miss it. And all of a sudden it's, you know, starting to go over. So I thought with broccoli, you really are trying to, um, when you bring it into the kitchen, you're breaking it up into sprouts. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to grow varying types of sprouting broccoli and uh, see how that goes rather than trying to produce a head. So now this nine star broccoli was gifted to me by Mel uh, uh, from the UK. And I'm very curious to see if it will be a perennial here for me. I know it's a uh, perennial for her. Uh, so I have several different kinds, some purple, but it's not purple sprouting. They're actually mini broccolis. Uh, so they sprout, you know, you don't have to overwinter them because I can't, I can't overwinter. I've got some broccoli rob going and some tronchuta, which I believe is a, I can't recall the country that one comes from, but it's a very loose kind of a cabbage loose leaf, kind of a kale uh, influenced piece. So I have grown this one before and it's very good. And uh, Frise Rouge here uh, on the kales is new for me. It looked, I love, I love to grow like red and purple and darker colored things if I can, because they're a lot less available usually at the stores. So, you know, Black Magic, that's a, that's a given, right? Got to grow that one. And red ruble, I really enjoy as well. Uh, another red kale is scarlet. Uh, bunny tails is a grass. And again, growing that for uh, a, pot, uh, a vase filler. And uh, the new Hanover ground cherries have never had a good, I've never grown that well. And I'm just darn determined. I am going to get some ground cherries. Uh, so there, I planted six and I have absolutely no germination yet. So I don't know if I have the curse of the ground cherry or they're different seeds. So I know it's not uh, all the seeds problem. Uh, so we're hoping for a good, at least one plant of ground cherries. Uh, now these next three are celosias, which I've grown this Sunday orange previously. I have a wall in my kitchen that's about that color. So I kind of like to, you know, bring that tone into the kitchen. Uh, but these glowing embers and raspberry lemonade are totally new. I'm very excited to see those. Uh, I got those from a, a seed company called Florette, and they do some very original, original seeds. Uh, I'm growing this uh, hibiscus. Uh, it's called Zinger, and it's really for like making a nice red Zinger tea. I don't know if you've tried that, but it's so good. And I've grown this now three years in a row. First year, not one flower. Second year, I got some buds, but no actual flowers. So I'm going to try it in a different location this year and see if it might be a little more content. Yeah, a little more content if it's in a different spot. Both years I'd had it in a pot. And, you know, not everything likes to grow in a pot. Uh, I'm growing basil cinnamon. I grow that a lot for, or, yeah, cinnamon basil, sorry. Grow that a lot for tea. It's lovely. Uh, and then, of course, the Genovese. Uh, nope, that's not on the right. That's not the right slider. Oh, 
One sec. There we go. It's this slider I need. Uh, and then I've got a mammoth leaf, which really is a mammoth leaf. And I grow that because it makes a really good um, caprese, a uh, little caprese salad on a toothpick. You wrap, uh, you take a, those mini mozzarella balls and uh, the basil. And what's the third? Oh, a little tomato. And they all fit in the, the mammoth leaf basil. And that's just kind of a cute, um, cute way to do it. Uh, and then I also have a red Genovese, which is a lovely, it's a gorgeous plant. And it also, you, it tastes exactly like the nice Italian Genovese. Uh, I'm growing a seasoning celery this year, not celeries for stalks. Because I find, you know, it's really more the flavor that we're going after. Now, I also know I said I wasn't going to grow uh, cabbages. Well, I changed my mind. Uh, I got a really nice uh, agricultural fabric that I'm going to really give it a shot. I'm not going to grow them through the summer, though. I'm trying to I'm trying to get in really early in the spring uh, and get out before the infestation of those white butterflies. Uh, but I have found out I have found that red cabbage seems to ha have either a defense against those or the the worms or the white butterflies do not enjoy the red cabbage. So I'm going to throw in a couple of this uh, filter kraut I've never grown before, but I totally love the shape and thought that might be a fun one. Greyhound, or as uh, Nigel uh, says, he calls it dog, which is what I have it. I think he had a friend that used to call it dog. Uh, and then this is a Merlot uh, Chinese cabbage which I love the red cabbage when I make kimchi. Um, it's just wonderful. So you can see I'm trying a couple. I'm doing this Merlot. I'm doing this Purple Express and this Red Trumpet. I kind of want to see which one I like the best and know to lean into that perhaps more next year. This Mermaid's Tail Cabbage uh, is not only gorgeous. I mean, the the color variation in this uh, from a lovely mauve and, and goes up to a green. I mean, it's just beautiful. Tastes delicious. And this one I get from a company, uh, a U.S. company called Fruition Seeds. Uh, they have a lovely uh, selection of seeds. And this one is the new one they've come out with this year called Mermaid's Aura. And so I just had to kind of try that one too. <laughs> Looked very good. Uh, two broccolis. Uh, the cheddar has not sprouted one little thing yet. And these were planted back at the end of February. Uh, but the graffiti are all up. So I, I didn't think brassica seed in particular had like a real expiration date, so to speak. Uh, but... We will find out if those don't come up. Uh, Autumn Star Next. I don't know what that's about. To check, I'll have to change that. These are Colette's, uh, which are all up. Very excited to, I think I have six or nine of those going. Uh, very excited about those. I'm growing two eggplants, which I said last year I would not grow. But um, we have become big Baba Ganoush uh, enjoyers. Uh, and so I'm going to just pick one of these after this year as kind of my, uh, my go-to eggplant. Uh, ginger, I have, I added some more um, ginger root, so to speak, uh, to my current stuff that is already growing. Uh, and that's already sprouted up. So this is, I think, going to be a really good year uh, for ginger. So I hope you all are 
are trying to grow some ginger this year. I think it's, it's fun. It's an easy, easy, easy crop to grow. Uh, and I'm trying uh, some of mine in a very shaded area in the garden because apparently the natural way ginger grows is in the forest, uh, in like a tropical forest, but under the canopy of trees. So it likes the heat, but it doesn't necessarily like direct sun. So I have a few uh, shady spots. I don't have many, but I thought, you know, I could, I could pop those in there and we'll see what happens. Uh, Murasaki sweet potatoes. I'm growing those obviously for the slips so that we can get in and uh, grow some sweet potatoes. They're doing well. I've had one potato has gone crazy making slips. So um, I think this coming week we're going to pick, you know, pick some of those off and get those starting to root in water. But these don't need to go out until really end of May, early June, because they really do like it warm, warm, warm. That's why they're such a good, at least over here, such a good prolific Southern garden favorite because they've got heat uh, galore down there. So uh, we'll try to mimic some of those. I, I'm really using it also as a decorative vine uh, for my neighbors because I think that looks prettier than just looking at, I have very tall uh, raised beds. And so I think it'd be prettier to see some purple vines going down those than just, here's my wood bed that you can stare at. Okay, so here's um, some of the hot peppers or some of the peppers. Uh, this is gochugaru, which um, really shouldn't be super hot. I can't get a Scoville number on it. Uh, but when you use gochugaru, you don't, um, there we go. Uh, you, you don't uh, dry it with the seeds. So even if it's a bit hot, all the stems and seeds are taken out. Uh, a couple of these are new for me. Actually, all three of these are new for me this year. Uh, this is a bronze. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It's a mix of a couple, um, a couple hot peppers. So that's running between uh, 5,000 and 10,000, which is a little bit warmer than uh, jalapeno. Oh, good, my phone's off. Um, this Pasilla Mixe, a little bit hotter. I'm, uh, I've been inspired by, of course, uh, we did some, pepper specials on uh, Potty Mouth Garden Club. And of course, I was not growing many hots and then we did that and I had to try a couple new ones. Uh, this Thunder Catch Out Brown, definitely hotter, but it's supposed to have a really smoky flavor. And I always like peppers that bring something else to the party. So it doesn't mean you need to use a lot of them, but you could, I, I see that in a mole all day long. Uh, so that might just be a lovely, rather than even having to get your peppers smoked, um, you can just enjoy them. Chili de Arbol, Ethiopian Brown, uh, Sugar Rush Stripey, all really kind of well-known. Well, I shouldn't say Ethiopian Brown is probably not that well-known, but some good solid heat in there for sure. Uh, Chili de Arbol Purple, which is um, kind of the same type of chili, but it ripens to purple. Fresno is another kind of classic. And Jigsaw, I'm growing for the foliage. Uh, I don't know if you can see, it's beautifully variegated uh, with purples and greens. So I'm growing that one just for a vase filler uh, because it's pretty. Uh, tiger jalapeno, a little hotter than most, but absolutely gorgeous pepper. And even if I don't um, do anything with those, I think they'll be gorgeous in the garden. Uh, I got the pepperoncini this time. 
very mild because you know these are kind of the pickled ones that you get uh, with sandwiches or salads and i've grown the other kind that are really hot and i think it'd be really nice just to have a a nice light pickled pepper uh, i always grow a little paprika uh, because it's you know a staple in the kitchen right uh tobago seasoning this is one of the best um, chili powders because it's really just a seasoning. This is seasoning a lot of Caribbean dishes. So it's got a lot of fruit uh, overtones. It's only 500 on the Scoville. So it's not, um, I mean, that's totally mild pepper. Um, but it's one I grow every year because the seasoning is so delicious. Cubanelle, I don't think I've grown these before, but I see many uh, recipes that call for Cubanelles. So I'm going to grow a few. Peachadoo as a cross. Uh, what is it? It's not honeydew. I want to say it's honeydew, but it's there's another name for a pepper. And this one was just crossed with a peach um, overtones. So again, pretty mild. Uh, poblanos always in my garden. Uh, just always. Ajvarsky here, probably my favorite red pepper. Uh, sweet, stuffable. Uh, I mean, just, just a lovely pepper. Uh, and these three again are uh, just sweet peppers. We we love um, stuffed peppers. So a lot of these are just wonderful for it. But if you've never grown a chocolate pepper, uh, I think they're the sweetest. Uh, on the inside, usually they're red, which um, I I think red peppers are just wonderful. But this one just has, a, it doesn't taste like chocolate to me. I guess it looks like chocolate a little bit, but very nice flavor. Uh, Tangerine Dream. Another orange sweet pepper, lunchbox pepper mix. Uh, they're, they're almost a garden, a gardener's snack. I don't know how many of those actually make it into the house. Uh, this new one is from Row 7 Seed Company. They are some um, gardeners who work with chefs to come up with uh, things. I'm actually waiting for one of their seeds to come in. It's called garlic and it's a cross between um, garlic and a leek. So I'm very interested, but they keep telling, you know, March, March, and I don't see them yet. Uh, this was a habanero that I thought was a habanero. Well, I, I'm going to say I thought it was the heat of a habanero but it's uh, a sweet pepper. I thought they were just saying sweet because of maybe some of the flavors of a habanero. Um, so that'll be interesting. I've always been interested in trying to grow um, some of these hotter peppers that don't have the heat, but have the flavor. Uh, the habanero flavor is outstanding. So we'll see if this Vincente's sweet habanero uh, is able to produce that lemongrass always a staple uh, flat leaf parsley always growing that catnip i have a cat he's pretty used to getting uh, organically grown hand harvested catnip <laughs> so i would i don't want to disappoint and not have that although when we were doing the um pest special a couple of weeks ago, or was it was it last that might have been last week uh catnip was like one that kept coming up as something you could plant that helped keep some pests away so i i'm gonna uh, try to pop that around the garden a lot and see how well that does uh with interplanting and how much that can help uh chamomile love i love 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 chamomile tea and chamomile is such a free seeder 
I mean, you plant this anywhere, you'll find chamomile popping up everywhere in the garden. And I don't mind that because I can just dig that up and pop it over where I have the chamomile. And um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, dr Black Dragon, I've never grown my own coleus. And I thought for sure that is a gorgeous vase filler. Uh, but I think I have quite a few spaces uh, that will look beautiful with that. I'm growing some uh, wave petunias, which are the ones that you don't have to deadhead. And they grow and they spread and they're luscious. Uh, again, Dusty Miller is also a great vase filler and something that's always uh, in my garden. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, some more easy waves, easy waves. Uh, these blue reflections, uh, sweet pea. Very excited to see how those come up. Those are out in my winter sewing jug. So I hope they, I hope they survive all these, this warmth. Um, growing a citronella bomb, which I think would be nice growing around our deck that we try to sit out on. Uh, the, for the entire summer. Uh, trying this Indian coriander, which from what I've read about it, it's you grow that more for the coriander than the cilantro, than the, for the leaves. So you're trying to get seeds. Also trying a Moroccan one. Uh, Mountain mint, always, always in the garden. This uh, Marvelette uh, blue mint uh, for the tea garden. Here's some onions. I had absolutely no, these were planted back or sown back in um, the 15th of February, zero germination. The creme brulee are up like, and I don't think my Zabrun was old um, seed. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, this Elsa Craig was a reso because the first one I know was old seed. I was trying to, I was trying to use it up. Agastachi growing several different kinds, uh, mainly for teas. Uh, here's my hottest pepper, uh, datil. I guess that's what I'm going to say it is. Hundred thousand to three hundred thousand. I'm actually growing this one because I want to string them and dry them and um, just have them occasionally hang in the kitchen as a little decoration, I guess. Uh, fireworks. These are going to go down the side of my deck just to make it look a little bit festive. Uh, again, more standards, jalapenos, uh, the brown version of, uh, what is that the brown version of? A poblano. Yeah, yep. Uh, Padron pepper I've never grown before, but um, it's a Spanish. It's on a lot of Spanish tapas menus. Uh, some asters, uh, milkweed in the orange version, and I think I'm also growing. Yeah, I am uh, a yellow version. Oscar, um, the hairy balls. It's actually a milkweed which I think is because it looks absolutely nothing like milkweed, uh, but beautiful as a vase filler. I kid you not. It's just gorgeous. Uh, I'm doing a couple colors of Snapdragons this year, purposefully keeping that tight. More um, sweet peas, celeriac, a nice little group of onions, this new Cabernet. I've never tried that before. Supposed to be a nice storage onion. Uh, ranunculus, these flowers, the orange ones are struggling. The pink ones are ready to put out in the garden, but they're not ready. <laughs> the garden's not ready, let's put it that way. Uh, so here's again my Murasaki, the ones I started. A uh, little bit of amaranth. Uh, let's see, what is that? That's calendula. Some more daisies, larkspur, poppies, uh, poppies, poppies. Whoop, too quick. 
uh, stock. I love stock. Love stock. The beautiful, beautiful colors. Uh, I'm doing some straw flowers again because they're just beautiful. Now the Bedfordshire Tampions. I have gotten six of those. And where I used to be able to get Bedfordshire champion seeds, no longer does it. So I'm going to grow out these six just for seed so that we can have some seed on this side of the pond, uh, whether or not we'll, we'll, they'll sell it to us or not, right? Some more onions, uh, calabunga, which is hilarious for small leaves. These are just some lettuces that are cooking right now. And I think we're almost done here. Some cosmos, some alyssum, uh, echinacea, a couple kinds, three kinds of echinacea, back where the uh, ginger started. And lastly, whew, cucumber, a diva cucumber that I have been growing inside the house because uh, Jesse from Plot 37 does that. And so we all kind of thought, you know, let's give it a shot. I'm waiting. I see little teeny weeny baby cucumbers. So this was not for outside. This was just, um, yeah, this was just kind of the challenge of getting what inside the house. So, wow, that was long. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that screen and I'm going to take a quick look back uh, at all the, all the comments. Uh, wow, maybe that's, let me see, not very exciting to watch me reading things. Ha 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 ha. Uh, yes, Leanne, that is Peppa Dew Peppers. Yeah, that was the uh, peach -a -dew. They crossed a Peppa Dew with, I think, a Sugar Rush peach or something. Um, oh, Betty, you're, you're not far from me. Just north and a hop over the river. So are you in uh, Windsor? If we're talking about the same, if we're talking about the same river or, you know, where I'm thinking. Uh, okay. Oh, it's nice to know where everyone's from. Uh, Okay, let's see. Wow, you guys have been busy. What's the secret to growing stock? Oh, I don't know if there's a secret. Uh, I, tr I have done it both inside and in the winter sewing. And um, I don't think there's a secret. If there is, I'm not sure I know what it is. I grow it just like I grow Larkspur, uh, Snapdragons. Although I know you grow a lot of Snapdragons, Robin. Mine just seem to hover around a quarter inch high and not too much after that. So I'm really hoping to coax those into actually producing a flower this year. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with stock, but, um, and I actually prefer to put that one out uh, in the winter sewing stuff because then I don't have to really fuss with it much. Uh, yeah, I wish I had a an answer to a secret. Um, oh, Mel, um, I, th I see Mel in the chat. Uh, I am growing, you sent me Alsturian cabbage, which I believe is a perennial cabbage and nine star broccoli. 
I'm starting both of those this year and maybe with the, um, and letting some of them uh, just go to seed so that I can collect some seeds from them. So thank you so much um, for doing that. And we can have some of those seeds over here um, across the pond from you. Uh, and I'm very curious to find out if they will act as perennials uh, for us. And again, that depends where everybody is, but I'm in kind of a mid range uh, for, for perennials. So uh, it's nice if they can handle almost, I'm almost a seven with the way this whole climate is going. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. You can take cuttings as well. Thank you. Oh, you didn't even think about that. Yeah, because I was going to try to share the seed. So I'll do it both ways. Uh, particularly if it's, oh my goodness, if it's a perennial. I'll be happy to take some cuttings of that. Um, uh, and Betty, with the cucumbers uh, growing inside, uh, I am, I find that to be absolutely the case. I They will crisp up and I... And I don't know what it's all about. They're they're watered uh, just like I would water something outside. Uh, they get a little drink of, you know, uh, fish fertilizer or seaweed fertilizer every couple of weeks. But I do see there's actually a few little baby, baby cukes. So I just want to get one cuke off... Um, both plants and then i'm i'm happy as a camper and if not oh across the border from port huron okay yeah yeah you're very close we're only about um 45 minutes away yeah well that's nice to know betty thank you oh leanne said the asturian tree cabbage didn't overwinter i covered it with okay yeah, you know, I, I think when we're talking U.S. to U.K. Uh, climate differences, although I think we really uh, mimic each other a little bit, kind of when it's time for you to sow things, kind of time for us to, you're, you're, you're just so much more mild. We have much higher fluxes between what is our cold and what is our hot. And you guys have that lovely Gulf Stream that kind of keeps everything. I mean, not that you don't get cold and hot, but you get less of a of a differential than we do. So I think things probably uh, will overwinter a whole lot easier. Because sometimes when I'm watching some of my UK friends on YouTube and they're out like in a t-shirt uh, gardening and I'm thinking, man, I want to put a hood on in a big scarf. Uh, and it's, you know, uh, but I realize it's that beautiful Gulf stream that you have. Um, oh, that's also a great idea, Mel, to um, bring in a cutting and let it overwinter. So come spring, you can get it out there pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. Okay, so is everybody else feeling, uh, I mean, I'm not feeling the rush of March, but I also know, you know, time to really, if, I, if any of my peppers have failed, kind of got one last shot to get those in. If I want to get anything, uh, time to really finalize the pepper or the tomato. Um the tomato choices, which always, I think, always comes down to, um, it's almost brutal at the end because you really have to go, no, I'm not, I can't do all of them, but I really would like to. I also got a tomato from Row 7, that company I was talking about that's chefs and gardeners working together, and it's called a patchwork, 
and it's like a paste tomato that um, gets very dark. So it's like it's red and it's also got some dark. Uh, so it looks kind of patchworky, I guess, is the best thing I can say. Uh, very excited to see that. They say the flavor is uh, outstanding. So that's a new one that I am trying this year. Uh, Amanda is asking, uh, are you growing lots of cabbage and other brassicas this spring? Yes, but I, I'm going to kind of limit it to the spring, I think. Uh, I just, I love, I mean, the brassica family is like, what is it, 75% of what we garden? Uh, now, uh, the only ex exception to that will be the um, Colettes because they need to go, they need to go long and they will. Uh, so I'm having my husband build me some very light movable covers for these things that we will attach this new fabric that I have and see if that kind of takes, you know, if that helps. Uh, I sure hope it does help. Um, so yes, I am doing that. And maybe a few in the fall, depending on how the um, butterfly population is around here. Uh, and then we've got, um, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I was, I was pulling up Debbie's question. And I'm thank, glad that you answered that, Mel, because I was like, I think they're different, but I don't know. So uh, because, again, that's more of a, a UK vegetable than I've known it to be here. But I imagine anybody south of me could probably grow that um, easily as a perennial. So uh, we honestly today... I could be outside planting things in the garden, but I know it's it's not going to last. Uh, uh, and I heard, uh, I was talking to my daughter earlier today, and she's in um, the Denver area in Colorado, and that one city is expected to get 17 inches of snow uh, over the next day and a half. So... It's not over yet. Uh, and a lot of times kind of what starts down there can swing up here, depending on uh, the, you know, the direction it's taking, but I'm like 17 inches of snow. That's no joke. So uh, I've sourced seeds for the spinach, but not the cabbage. Are, are you in the U.S., Debbie? Uh, because I am, I'm sowing a couple of them just to let those go to seed. So we have some seed on this side of the pond. Um, so if you can't, uh, that's really one of my uh, goals this year is to have plenty of that available and can get it out to other people, particularly if it really over winters here. That would be amazing. Okay. So, uh, Betty, you're a little north of me. Is that correct? Yeah, you'd be a little north of me, I think. Oh, you're in the UK. Okay. Yeah, probably not helpful to you then. Uh, okay, so does anybody, is anybody else... Um, struggling with, I mean, Betty and I both talked about the fact that we're growing cucumber inside and they're getting, the leaves do get a little crispy, but I've noticed that the ones at the base of the plant are beautiful and doing well and setting off their little tendrils. And the ones at the end of the plant, it's like the ones in the middle uh, get very crispy. I, I don't, I don't know what that's about. And on the other plant, it's not doing that this year. So uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. So you have not, 
Okay, Robin has not really started the mad sewing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I already have, my grow shelf is full. That's 16 flats of actively growing things. And I have two flats in the kitchen that are that were stuff we just planted yesterday. So they don't need to be under lights until maybe another day or two. So we'll start doing the, the, the shuffle. I, I have... I have potatoes growing on my shelf. That was, uh, I got those going way too early. I found them in my potato bin. They had these like two inch eyes on them. And I thought, I've seen um, Steve from uh, Digwell Greenfingers. You know how he always does the single seed potato Um if you don't, he does a single seed potato and it's well worth kind of watching. Uh, he starts them in little pots and then bumps them up to bigger pots. So my thought was, well, I'll start them in little pots because I don't even get my seed potatoes until like mid-April. Um, and I know in the UK, the standard time is like St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? The 17th? of March to start potatoes. So I thought, well, I'm going to try that. And maybe I can get these six that I planted, you know, a little earlier in the season. Uh, so I don't know. I have to try to figure out how to slow them down. So I think I'm going to move them to a cooler place and not cold, but just cooler. And maybe like just get some natural just some filtered light and see if I can stretch them to get them outside. But uh, yeah, that's one that I realized, yeah, I could have just popped all those eyes off and started over again. Uh, but I wanted to catch it while the potato was still nice and firm. So uh, I am curious how I'm going to fit everything that I'm currently growing in my garden because uh Oh, hi, Tiny Garden. Oh, if you guys have not seen her channel, it's absolutely lovely. And she just got an allotment. And so it's been fun to watch her completely start to transform that. Uh, and then she has a tiny garden in her backyard or at her home. So it's it, it's very fun to watch. And she's lovely. Um Okay, you're planting spuds next week, St. Patrick's weekend. I'm planting or I'm sowing seeds, uh, peas outside on that day. That's my, that's the first thing I can actually plant in the garden. Cross my fingers. I cover it with a bunch of uh, tool to keep anybody who's not supposed to be in my garden away from picking up the seeds and having a little snack. So I just kind of wrap them in uh, in tool and then we, we hope for the best. <laughs> Sometimes the squirrels are, it's really more the squirrels because they're just, they're annoying. Uh, as, as we all know, they're very annoying. So, oh, you're cute. No, I'm not really too kind. I'm, I, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, I can't believe an hour went by. I think did I? I think my list of what I've sown so far is, was longer than I realized. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for listening to all of that. Um, yeah, so uh, I know we're in kind of the heat of let's get everything ready. Uh, but again, we're not, it's not July. 
and uh, we're not going yet. Yeah, tomatoes might be a little late. Um, I think we're, I think we're fine. And uh, I know I've done a much more methodical planning out of my garden this year, kind of what's next, what's on deck, what do I need to get in by what date. And that has really freed me uh, to not be worrying. And this database, I know it probably feels like, well, that's a lot. It, once you set it up and do it, it's really not. And then you can go back and look at what you did last year and see what um, worked and maybe what didn't. So all that to be said. Uh, oh, hi, Rob. Didn't see you. I was busy doing, I don't know, figuring out how to screen share. Uh, so anyway, guys, I will next year or next year. Next week, we should have a guest back on, and uh, I wish you all a great week and uh, marvelous. I'm looking forward to really good gardening or good growing seasons this year. So I can't wait to uh, hear about all of your successes and failures because that's just part of the gardening world, isn't it? So thank you so much for being here for dealing with this whole crazy uh, time switches that uh, Mel's asking, will it be at 6 p.m. again? I'm not sure when you guys go through uh, your daylight savings time. For some reason, I'm thinking it might be six o'clock again next week uh, and then seven o'clock the week after. Uh, but I, I, cause I thought you guys went through it much later than we did. So I'll get my, um, car, my card up a whole lot sooner. So, uh, you can figure out your time. Uh, it's always two o'clock here in the U S and, uh, yeah, I'll get my card, my card got up really there, my thumbnail. Uh, and I apologize for that. So Rob is saying at the end of the month. Uh, yeah. So, uh, again, thank you for popping in. Thank you for being here and, uh, wish you a great week. Bye now.